Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're doing a classic unboxing on a range of products from Surefire Gaming. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we'll be taking a look at some peripherals from Surefire Gaming. Now, most of you have probably never heard of them, and up until very recently, neither had I. But Surefire reached out to us and said, Mike, would you like to take a look at some of our products? So uh, I figured, why not? And it seems that Surefire Gaming is actually a sub-company of a rather well-known brand known as Verbatim. One or two of you may have actually heard of them. Uh, massive company. Mostly, actually, they do things like storage devices, SSDs, memory sticks, that kind of stuff. But they've also branched into gaming. So really excited to have a look, see what they can actually offer. Now, I'll talk about some of the prices first of all. Now, these are approximate prices because these products are kind of limited in where they're available at the moment. You can get them in the UK and Europe. Uh, overseas viewers may struggle to get them a little bit at the moment, but here in the UK you can get them from places like Amazon.co.uk, get them from Scan, eBuyer, those kinds of places. So we'll put some affiliated links in the video description for Amazon, and also we'll put some links for the actual company themselves, so you can click on their site. Have a look at some of the other things they offer, there's a ton of other peripherals they do, not just these four, so if you want a full setup, maybe a gaming headset, maybe a set of speakers, that kind of thing, they've got you covered on that as well. So price-wise, at the moment, this is the uh, Surefire Gaming Mount RGB. This is the 320, I believe it is. Nope, sorry, this is the RGB 680 Gaming Mouse Mat, and this one is around about £25 at the moment. We've also got the Axis, which is uh, actually quite an unusual device. This is a mouse bungee, but actually also has a built-in USB hub, and it's also powered as well if you want it to be. This is around about £25-£30 here in the UK. Moving on, we've got the Eagle Claw mouse. So this is a programmable mouse with an absolute ton of buttons. For this, you're looking somewhere between the 15 to 20 pounds mark, which actually, it has got a DPI sensor of up to 3,200. So actually, that's a pretty decent price for this. And last of all, we've got the keyboard. So this is the Surefire gaming keyboard. This is a RGB keyboard. It isn't mechanical switches, unfortunately, but it has got those kind of nice membrane-esque kind of mechanical switches, which uh, some of you may prefer. This retails at the moment around about the £20 mark also. Again, I'll put all the description and the links for this in the video description if you want to check it out in more detail. So that's enough of that. Let's uh, take a look at some of the packaging. We'll unbox these, do them bit by bit, and we'll go through. There will be timestamps in the video as well, so if you want to go through to a specific product, look in the video description and you'll see the timestamps. So I think we'll start off at the uh, the base. So this is the, the mouse mat. So this is the Silent Flight RGB 680 Gaming Mouse Pad. Now this is a uh, okay, mouse pad, very high quality, and it's got RGB, which is always a good thing. We do like to see that in our mouse pads. I'm going to have a look and see what we actually get inside, because I'm actually a little bit intrigued in this one. We've seen quite a few mouse pads recently, and I'd be interested to see what this is actually like. What else do we get in here? So, there is a braided USB cable, so that's USB type A to micro USB, so that is going to be to actually power the device. There's also a little instruction leaflet. And we've also got the uh, the pad itself, as you can see there. So it's actually quite a wide pad. I'll put the dimensions on the screen right now so you can see what the dimensions actually are. But this actually, for me, is perfect because it fits in actually on my computer desk over there really, really well. It's a slightly narrower desk. We're looking around about 800 millimeters wide. And I think this one is around about 680 mil, hence the name. So I should put a keyboard and a mouse in there. Really, I think if you're using this, then maybe a 10 keyless keyboard on a mouse might be beneficial to some, although if you're using a mouse with an extremely high DPI setting, then you don't really need a lot of room on this side, or perhaps even this side, to move your mouse around. But yeah, looks pretty decent, uh, nice smooth surface to it. Also, we've got the RGB elements around the outside edge, which is really nice, and there is this little control box area. So we plug in our USB into here, then you've got a button on there to control the RGB. So let's uh, take out the, the cable there. Okay. Actually, really nice braided cable, and that's a 1.8 meter cable. So if you're going to maybe the back of your PC or some sort of hub, then you're going to be absolutely fine. And there we go; it's lit up already. That looks kind of nice. It's not overly bright; just a little telltale edging around the outside edge. And we can go through and press on the button there, so we can go through and control the various elements of that. So with the button, we can just uh, press the button and cycle through the various options there of various lighting styles. Yeah, actually, that's, a, that's quite, a nice, quite a nice layout on that. 
that turns it off. Yeah, it's not overly bright, but it certainly does get the job done. So if you press and hold it as well, you can actually turn the lights off entirely. If you're not into lights and just want a, uh, a max mat, but really, if you just want a max mat, then yeah, probably not worth getting this one. So we press it again and it comes on. So we've got the default red to start with. Then we've got blue. Then we've got green. Then we've got like a, a kind of pinky color. Turquoise, yellow, then white. And then we go into uh, Unicorn Puke, which I think we'll stick with because you know me, I kind of really do like my Unicorn Puke. So let's uh, move this over a little bit and see what else we get to actually play with. And this has actually got a rubber back in as well, so I'm not going to wiggle it around too much because uh, the camera will shake. But it has got a uh, nice rubberized backing on there, so it's not going to slip around. Obviously, because I've just taken it out of the packaging, there is a little bit of a hump to it in certain areas where it probably needs to flatten out a bit. Obviously, given time, that will flatten out really nicely. Also, on the uh, the far side here, we've got the Surefire branding on there, which, uh, yeah, looks pretty nice and is uh, kind of embossed on there, so doesn't want to peel off very easily. So, yeah, nice surface. I like it. Nice and smooth and certainly a lot more comfortable on your wrists and that kind of stuff than it would be just a, a normal desk, which is actually one of the things which is plaguing me at the moment over on my desk over there, video editing. I'm editing away and I'm on a just basically almost like an Ikea type surface. And it's not particularly comfortable, especially for longer periods. So this hopefully should improve things immensely. Talking of improving things immensely, another thing which uh, bothers me is actually trying to plug stuff in all the time. And plugging things into your PC for most people, isn't too bad, but depending on where you've got your PC, if you've got it tucked away or you can't really see your USB ports, it can be a real pain in the backside to actually find them, especially with USB type A still being the mainstream, trying to get the USB cable and put it in the right way can be a real palaver. So Surefire have got a really good solution to this. So it is a combination of mouse, bungee, and also a USB hub. And also it's got a cool feature such as a card reader. So for me personally, for reading the SD cards that have the cameras, the Pocket 2, that kind of stuff, is going to be great. So let's take a look at that one next. So this is the uh, Surefire Axis, as we said. So this is a mouse bungee, as you can see, we've got this rubberized arm on the top here and this metal section. And also we've got a touch of RGB in it as well. So this works with LED lighting. It's got a cable holder. It's got active three port USB 3.2 uh, Gen 1 ports on there, which are type A. So all in that hub, micro SD card reader, and also it's plug in place. So I don't need any drivers or anything. You can just plug it in and get going. So let's take a look and see what we actually get inside of this. Oh, we get a lot. So first of all, we have a power adapter there. So they've actually sent the European style one or shaver style one, but that is a USB type A on there. So that is to actually power the hub. Now, of course, you don't have to power the hub if you don't want to. It depends what devices you're gonna be using. If you're gonna be plugging in things like mechanical hard drives in a USB container, or maybe a, a lot of high powered devices, then maybe you want to use that. Not entirely necessary if you want to keep cable management down to a minimum. Also, there is a quick start guide in there, which tells you how to plug things in, etc. Pretty straightforward and tells you about what you get included. But I can do that. So there is a USB, micro USB to type A connection. So this is for actually powering the device. So we'll plug that into our power pack, get that ready. Next up is the main cable. So this is a USB 3 cable and it's got on the end of it the kind of, uh, I'm not too sure what they actually call that. I think that's like a mini USB with power. It's a slightly unusual one. You don't really see it that often, apart from actually in quite a lot of those USB caddies which put hard drives in so you can get power and data out at the same time. Uh, you've probably seen these on Amazon and places like that. You can get replacements very easily. So you get one of those that is just over a meter and a half long. So that will be reaching over to the PC to actually transfer data. And next up, we actually have the mouse bungee, the base section. Now it's metal construction, also rubberized on the bottom to so stop it slipping around on the desk. Got some nice elements on there. So on the first side, you've got our micro SD card reader. Next to that is our power input. On the back, we've got three USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. So it's nice to have those. And on this side, we've got the main connectivity to the PC. So, plug this into here. I never get these right the first time. So that essentially could be all you need to do. So just plug that in, 
plug that end into your PC and essentially you are off to the races. So then you could use the hub, plug in extra devices, so maybe a USB stick if you're downloading biases, that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe plug in a set of headphones, maybe even the mouse. Again, down to the individual. If you are putting powered devices in, you might find it beneficial to actually plug in the power as well, which we'll do now, plug that in on the side. And then you can see we get the illumination on there. So you have got some RGB on there. It isn't addressable RGB and there's no real control over it, so it just fades through the, uh, the various colors. But actually, yeah, it looks quite nice. Slightly muted. Would have been nice to have seen something which you could actually synchronize with the rest of their equipment, but these are what I would call inexpensive components. They're not designed to be all linked together. This isn't like one of your Corsair IQ systems where everything can be combined and well, will cost you possibly a kidney. So this is absolutely fine. So let's plug in the uh, the bungee. So this is just gonna slot in on the top there. And that essentially is it. So that's quite a nice flexible top on there to uh, take the strain off your mouse. It's quite an unusual device. I actually really like the fact that there is a micro SD card reader on the side and all these USB ports. Mouse bungees generally tend to be suitable for uh, certain people, depending again how you're using your setup, how you're using your system. So for me being a lefty, let's move this over to this side. And that is essentially how I think we would have it set up. So yeah, you can put it wherever you want to obviously, probably closer to the mouse, the better. So let's take a look at the mouse next. That's gonna be the uh, next one to check out. So this is the Surefire Eagle Claw. This is a programmable mouse. Now this has actually got nine buttons on it. So you can program nine buttons, also RGB backlit, uh, 3200 DPI adjustable, and you've got adjustable settings via software. Now, I'm not gonna show you the software in this particular unboxing. We will be doing a slightly more in-depth video on some of these components as well. Uh, especially if there's any comments or questions in that comment section below, which you're more than welcome to stick your questions in. And if there's anything specific that you need answering, then uh, we'll try and answer it in our follow-up video. But this is essentially just gonna be an unboxing. So mouse-wise, this, uh, this is a pretty much a big boy. This is pretty a pretty sizable mouse. Now there seems to be some sort of plastic cover on there, so let's take that off. So there is like a shiny plastic section and also we've got a rubberized kind of grippy section on there as well. Uh, yeah, that's actually quite nice. For me being a lefty, it's always difficult with mice to kind of get comfy, but actually that does feel quite nice. It's quite wide as well, so there's a little bit of a rest for my thumb on that side, a little bit of a rest for my fingers on the other side. If you're using it right-handed, Wow, that does actually feel pretty uh, pretty comfy. I wish I was a right-handed person. That would make life a lot easier. So looking at the buttons, we've got various buttons on the side here, which are all programmable. So there's a, a G1, G2, G3, G4, which you can program to be pretty much anything you want to. Also on the side here, there is a dedicated left-click, double-click button. So you can press that for rapid double-clicks. Also, obviously, you've got your left and right mouse button. You've got a DPI setting button in the middle, which is nice and clicky. And also there is a scroll wheel, which uh, is quite a fast scrolling wheel. There's not too much of an indentation there. So for fast weapon switching or for fast scrolling in Windows, then I think a lot of you will like that a lot. On the bottom, not a great deal going on here. We've got the sensor. Again, this is uh, 3,200 DPI. We've got some skates, pretty decent sized skates around the, uh, the, the back there. Slightly smaller one on the front. And there is actually a nice 1.8 meter braided cable as well. Again, it's all USB, so yeah, absolutely fine. Nice rubber texture on the top there. So not overly rubber, more of a texture. But yeah, that's uh, quite nice. So let's plug that in and see what this looks like. We'll put it through our USB powered hub through the bungee. Let's get a real feel for what this is like. So straighten this out a little bit, first of all. So with the bungee, normally what you do is put your cable in Give yourself a little bit of slack on there. Put it into those channels. And that's in there nicely. So again, keeps the uh, the cord off of the mat itself. So there's less drag. You might want to readjust that slightly, but that'll do for now. So let's plug in this into our hub so we can light it up. Okay, 
Okay, so plugging that in, actually it does need to be connected to a PC to get the lighting to work. So we'll try and do some cutaways that so you can see what the RGB lighting is. But actually, it does seem to move really nicely on this mouse pad. Nice bit of slide to it. And the buttons are pretty clicky. Now this isn't loaded up with things like Omron switches and Pixar sensors, etc. It's a, a relatively budget affair, but yeah, it feels quite nice. The double click button, I think it's using the same switches. The top one is definitely uh, a lot harder to press, so you won't be doing any of that accidental DPI changing whilst you're in game, which is good because of where it is. It's actually quite a long button, so you could accidentally hit that. But... And the side buttons. Yeah, they're a little bit on the uh, the cheap side, if I'm completely honest with you. So I'm not too sure about the mouse, so I've got to be honest with you. The feel of it is a very, very comfortable mouse. It'll be interesting to see what it's like in gameplay. Again, we will do a follow-up video to see what that's actually like. Um, I normally use the side buttons for reload, which is probably not going to be... Yeah, I think the buttons are a little bit on the small side to have that many on the side to have um, a degree of accuracy. So if you're kind of doing it from muscle memory, you could potentially be clicking on the wrong buttons. So those, for me personally, might be a little bit over the top. It would have been possibly nicer maybe to have seen just two buttons on there. So I have a front and a back button. I think that would have actually worked out better. But again, it is a relatively budget mouse, around about 15 to 20 pounds, so you can't expect too much. But certainly, they've got the feel of it and the grip, absolutely, for me personally, they got it spot on. It does feel really comfortable. Just a shame those side buttons are just a little bit too, a little bit too mushy for my liking. But anyway, that is the mouse, so we'll put that to one side for now. The next thing is gonna be the keyboard, which uh, actually isn't a mechanical keyboard, but actually I've had a little tap on it already doesn't seem too bad, so let's take a look at that one next. We are making a right mess of this desk at the moment. So this is the uh, the Surefire Kingpin keyboard. Again, not a mechanical keyboard, so it's all membrane switches, but it has got those kind of wide plungers, so hopefully uh, it should be quite tactile. So RGB gaming keyboard. This is the QWERTY style. They also do the other options available for European countries, etc. So we've got RGB lighting, we've got 114 keys, and 24 key, sorry, 25 key uh, anti-ghosting. And also you've got shortcut keys and a 1.8 meter cable. On the back goes into a little bit more detail, individual stuff. So compatible Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows 7. All of these items are actually compatible with pretty much everything in this USB. So if you're using this for a console or for your desktop PC, it should be absolutely fine. Obviously, if you've got any comments or questions regarding that, do let us know in the comment section or you can reach out to Surefire themselves. Let's see what is actually in the box. Probably not a great deal. So we get a uh, little installation guide there. A little bit of information, not a great deal in there actually. It tells you what the keys do, the layouts, etc. Yep, pretty standard stuff. And there is the keyboard itself. Which again, this one is a little bit on the chunky side, a little bit large. It's nice to see actually. Well, some of you may prefer it, some of you may not. I like to see where there's a little bit of an extra kind of wrist rest on here. It's not a full-on wrist rest, um, more of a ledge than anything, but it's actually got a really nice kind of sizing to it. It actually reminds me a lot of the uh, the original Microsoft Internet keyboard, which uh, actually was one of my and Kath's favourites. So yeah, pretty decent. Along the top here, we've got some function keys. So you've got my computer, you've got the home button, mute, volume down, volume up, and on this side you've got an audio button, so that will open up your chosen kind of uh, music program, whether it's the Microsoft built-in one to Windows 10 or Winamp or whatever sort of thing it is. Any of those you can use. You've got a play, pause button. And actually, these bu these uh, top buttons are actually quite chonky as well. They're not the usual kind of little diddy buttons which take ages to press. These are actually almost like full-size keys, so yeah, pretty good. Uh, rewind, play, fast forward, pause, etc., etc. Obviously, you've got your keypad on there. Quite nice and springy. Definitely a lot of different uh, types of noises. Although, in this main deck area, all very similar sounding when we get to the enter key. Yeah. 
yeah, actually, I quite like that. On the bottom, there is uh, yeah, some slots there. So this is kind of anti-spill. So if you do spill things on it, they'll just drain out for those bottom holes, which is awesome. Rubber pad on the bottom there in the corners. And also you've got the flippy up legs, both of which, now in the down position, there's no rubber on there. On the up position, there is actually a uh, little bit of rubber there to keep things nice and still. Although if you're using it on a nice pad or gaming pad surface, then you're gonna be absolutely fine. So actually, yeah, that feels pretty decent. Let's see if we can plug this one in and uh, get it to light up so you can see what it looks like. And that looks like it's gonna be the same deal again where it actually needs to be plugged into a computer to light up. Oh no, there we go. So we can plug it into the, the power there and we can see it lighting up. So hopefully in the, uh, the overhead camera, you can see that now. Let's move this a little bit so you can see a bit better. There we go, that's much better. So now you can see the full layout of the keyboard. Again, you've got this nice kind of palm rest there, which is extended a little bit. It actually does feel uh, quite comfortable. Now for me, gaming, generally I tend to be obviously left-handed, so my mouse will be on this side, and I generally tend to use those keys and those for movement, so yeah, they're pretty nice. Obviously, options for RGB, you've got the lighting effect there, you can see at the moment, which is kind of your traditional flow effect. We press the function key, and you've got options there, so that goes through the color fade. And that's a bit slower. What else we got there? Go through static colors, so we've got red, blue, green, as you'd expect. Essentially the same pretty much as the uh, the button on the mouse mat there. So yeah, you can cycle through individual colors and also it looks like there was a, yeah, there's a static one as well. So if you don't want it all moving around, you can have a static setup. So you've got the red over this side going through the spectrum into the green on that side. Also as well, there is a uh, game button there. So you can press that. That puts into gaming mode, which will disable the Windows key or you can press the function key in Windows to do that as well. So yeah, that's all good. Uh, you've got that one there, which cycles through. So you've got, well, you can see for yourselves, it's cycling through. That's actually quite quite nice. You can see where, obviously, because it isn't per key lighting, you can see where there is a little bit of a kind of discrepancy on brightness. So the keys that are in this section here predominantly and here where there's a lot more LED, you can see those are considerably brighter than perhaps ones which are towards this outer edge on the peripheral. Not a massive deal, not a deal breaker. Uh, number lock and caps lock won't work, obviously, because we're not plugged into a, a PC for that to work, but yeah, you get an idea of the colors there. So what else we got? There's another version of the rainbow one there. And there is a heartbeat one there. So that'll do like kind of like the heartbeat raise and fade. And if you don't like any of those, well, you can press that one and turn it all off. That turns it back on again as well. Yeah, not too bad. I, uh, I quite like that. I'm a sucker for an old fashioned keyboard, or at least old fashioned in terms of technology. Let's see if we can put off one of these keycaps and see what is going on underneath. Not, I don't think they're meant to come off, but we will certainly endeavor to pull them off. Let's see if we can get one, which is a little bit easier. Let's try the escape key. Yeah, there we go. So it does come off actually, there is, um, I'm not too sure what kind of cap you would call that actually. If you know what it is, let me know. It does appear, it does look like it's double shot. I can't imagine it would be for this kind of money, but it does possibly look like it is a double shot key. Definitely there's a clear plastic inner and obviously you've got the dark on the outside. And you can see there is the, uh, the plunger area there. Let's hope I haven't just uh, destroyed this. And it goes back in, so that's fine. So if you want to take it apart for cleaning, you can do. Again, splash resistant, so you can pour water on it. Well, don't pour water on it, but it will give you a level of uh, security there because all the membrane is kind of covering most of the electrical bits. But you know, I think that looks actually not too bad at all. I like it. It's a nice size, a really nice size. There's uh, actually very, very little wobble to the keys. Very, very, actually it's better than some of the mechanical switch keyboards I've used. So yeah, the key wobble is uh, very, very minimal. And I quite like the sound of it, it sounds quite nice. It's almost got a, a mechanical type noise to it, but with a membrane key. So 
So yeah, that's uh, that works for me. I think I, I quite like that. The keyboard, I think actually, of all of the items, well, the keyboard and the mouse pad, for me, I think are actually the, the highlights of this. The mouse bungee, I'm still a little bit weirded out by that whole setup. That is uh, kind of unusual as far as desktop things are concerned. Now, I've actually got on my other desktop there, I have actually got a, uh, a USB hub, which has got three USB ports on and a card reader, and I do use it daily. So I'm not too sure whether or not they've actually put too many things together in one thing there. Maybe the USB hub with a card reader on its own with a bit of USB would have been good and then a separate bungee at maybe a slightly lower cost. But then if you're looking for a bungee and also you're looking for a USB hub and also a card reader for around about 25, 30 pounds, you actually do get quite a lot of your money. And also you get a little bit of RGB bling included into the bargain. So yeah, a lot of these things I think are gonna be down to individual preference, but certainly I don't think any of them are inherently bad. The mouse I'm yet to test out in uh, some angry gaming, so we'll certainly see how that goes. But let us know what you think about these in the comments section below. I think that's going to wrap this one up for now. We will come back with a follow-up video, so if you have any specific questions, do let us know in those comments. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.